Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve n queen. So this is a pretty famous backtracking problem and we're finally going to be solving it today. And this is marked as a hard problem, but I don't think it's super hard to come up with what the solution would be, at least to come up with how to solve the problem. I think the hard part about this is actually implementing the code of this problem. Because like I said, it's backtracking. So basically we're just gonna be doing a brute force approach. So the problem statement is we're given n queens. We're given a board of size n by n, a chess board, right? So the dimensions are n by n. And we're also given n different queens that we have to place somewhere on this board such that no two queens ever attack each other. So you have to know a little bit about chess. So the way a queen can move is that a queen is allowed to move in any direction horizontally. So it can move to the left or to the right. It can move up or down. So it can move in all four directions. It can also move diagonally. So you know, this diagonal, which I call the positive diagonal because you can see it's kind of a positive slope, right? Top right. Also, it can move in the negative diagonal direction, which I, which, you know, you can kind of tell is going bottom right. So it can move in these different directions and that's kind of what makes it tricky. So we want to place the queens in such a way that they don't attack each other. So right now you can see this queen is going left, right, top, bottom, this diagonal, and this diagonal, right? So it's definitely not attacking any other queen. This queen as well, you can see it's going up, left, right, down, diagonal, and you could do that with all of the queens, right? I don't wanna make it too messy though. And then what we want to return is actually these boards themselves. So in this case, we were given n equals 4. And you can see that these two different compositions are the ways we could arrange the queens. And then we want to return that as a list of strings. Each string represents one row in this board. Now, the main thing you notice initially is, okay, since a queen can go horizontally or vertically, therefore, every queen has to be in a different a uh, row, right? Notice how every single queen is in a different row. That makes sense because if we ever put two queens in the same row, then they'd be able to attack each other, right? So each queen has to go in a different row. Notice how each queen is also going in a different column, right? Each queen in this case is in a separate column because they can move vertically. We don't want them to attack each other vertically as well. So that's pretty straightforward, I think, but the hard part is diagonals, right? Notice how we have many different diagonals in this board. Let's just look at the positive diagonals, what I call the positive diagonals, the ones that can go top to right. So notice how in this case, we have many different diagonals and in each of the cases, each queen is in a separate positive diagonal, right? You can see that that's the case. What about negative diagonals? Okay, this is one negative diagonal, this is another. Each queen is in a separate negative diagonal because we don't want any queens to attack each other uh, diagonally. So this is gonna be the part that's a little bit tricky to code, at least until you've seen it before, but it's actually really easy to implement once you know the main idea. So now let me kind of show you how we're gonna apply backtracking to this solution, how we're gonna apply the brute force method to get each valid arrangement of the end queens. So a really, really brute force idea that you might have is, okay, we, let's just choose, okay, we can pick any of these positions in the, in the four by four grid. Let's put a queen over here. So that's the first position we try. Okay, now let's try a different position, right? For the second queen, let's try putting the queen in this position, right? And then now we have all these remaining choices. Let's keep putting a queen in every single position and trying that. So this is one arrangement. Then maybe we could take the fourth queen and put it over here, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why is there any reason to do that? That's a little bit too brute force if you ask me. There's a, a much simpler way we can do it right? Because for each queen, instead of having n squared choices, how about we just have n choices? Because we know for sure each queen is definitely going to be in a different row. So first we can go like this. We can say, 
okay, we can decide to put, for this first row itself, right, this first row, we can decide to put the queen in the first position, or we could decide to put the queen in the second position, or the third position, or the fourth position. Whatever we do in that first row, then we're going to move to the next row, right? So now our goal is to find a different location where we can put the second queen in this second row. Now we could try putting it over here, or we could try putting it over here, or we could try putting it over here, but we can't put it over here. Why is it that we can't put it here? Because they're in the same column. So now you already can tell we're going to need to be maintaining the columns of whatever previous queens that we've already placed. We don't have to maintain the rows though, right? Because I just showed you why. Because every time we place a queen, we're going to move to the next row anyway until we get to the bottom, right? And then we're going to make sure that we're placing the last queen in a valid location. And if we are, then we're done, right? So we are going to have to keep track of which columns we place a queen in. And we're going to have to keep track of the positive diagonals that we're placing a queen in. And we're going to have to keep track of the negative diagonals that we're placing a queen in. And we can uh, keep track of all of these with a set right? So a set can tell us, a hash set can tell us which column of 0, 1, 2, or 3 we have put a queen already in. And we can do the same for a positive diagonal and a negative diagonal. But I bet you're wondering how can we do it easily with positive and negative diagonals, right? We don't have indices for something like this, right? What index does this diagonal belong to? What index does this diagonal belong to? And I'll show you there's a bit of a pattern when it comes to diagonals, positive and negative diagonals. Let's say we start at the origin, the top left position, and then we go diagonally bottom right. So this is what I'm going to refer to as a negative diagonal because from left to right, we end up going downwards, right? Do you notice anything about this diagonal? Well, we're starting at 0, 0, right? The row and column are 0, 0. As we move diagonally down, we get to this position, right? Then the row and column are 1, 1. Then we get to this position where the row and column are 2, 2. So notice how each time we're increasing the, the column value by 1 and we're increasing the row value by 1 as well. What does that tell us? That tells us along this diagonal, along this negative diagonal, the computation row minus column is going to stay constant. Over here, right, in this position, if you take the row minus the column, we get 0 minus zero, that equals zero. If you take the row minus column in this position, we get two minus two, that equals zero. So we can define this particular negative diagonal as being the zero negative diagonal. Let's try it out on a different negative diagonal to see if our pattern holds. Let's start over here at a different position, row zero, column two, and then go diagonally down. Notice how whenever we're going negatively diagonal, we're increasing the column by one and we're increasing the row by one. So in this uh, position, the row, which is zero minus the column was negative two, right? Zero minus two is negative two. When we get to the next position along this diagonal, we get one minus three, which is also negative, uh, negative two. So we can see that this pattern holds. The negative diagonal along this is going to be the negative one diagonal. The negative diagonal along this path is going to be positive one because we see one minus zero is positive one. So I just drew out a few of the diagonals. If you want to visualize it, you can see this diagonal is constant, this diagonal is constant, this diagonal is constant, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's how we're going to be doing negative diagonals. Is there a similar pattern we can use for positive diagonals? Let's see. So let's say we started our positive diagonal over here. We can see the row is three, the column is zero, and then, then we go diagonally top right, right? We go up in this direction. Now notice when we do go in this direction, we're moving to the right, we're increasing the column by one, but we're decreasing the row by one. So we can't use row minus column for positive diagonals, right? Because it's not gonna stay constant. You, over here, the row minus column is gonna be three. Over here, the row minus column is gonna be one. So it doesn't work if we do 
do row minus column, but notice since we're increasing the column going in this direction, but we're decreasing the row, that means row plus column is going to stay the same, right? The sum of these two values is going to stay the same because we're we're decrementing one but we're increasing the other for example in this position row plus column is three in this position row plus column is also three right so it's it's going to be three all the way what about this diagonal does it also work well three plus one that's four in this position two plus two that's four and this is also going to be 4. So you can see positive diagonals can be determined with R plus C. Turns out that these three sets are the only information we need. Then we can brute force start placing queens. How is the algorithm going to go? Like I mentioned, we're going to try each of the four positions in the first row, right? And for each of them, so the decision tree is going to look something like this, right? We'll try a queen in position zero. We'll try a queen in position one, position two, position three right and this is all for the first row and we'll do the exact same thing uh continuously right for if we put a queen here then could we play then we're gonna you know try a queen in all the other four places so two three now if we placed a queen here that means we put a queen here so then could we put a second queen in the same column no that's how we're gonna know how are we gonna detect that we can't do this we're gonna see that a queen has already been placed in the same column set so we're not gonna do that right so we can't place a queen here what about position one well it's clearly not in the same column, right? Why shouldn't I be able to place a queen over here? Well, it turns out that it's already been added to the negative diagonal. This position means the negative diagonal is zero. Row minus column is zero. So this position is also row minus column zero. That means the negative diagonal has already been used. So we also can't put a queen in this second position. So this path in our decision tree also does not work. Can we put a queen over here in this position? Yes, we can. It doesn't overlap with the positive diagonal and it doesn't overlap with the negative diagonal and they're not in the same column, right? So we can continue this one and we can also continue in this one, right? It's also not in the same positive or negative diagonal, also not in the same column. So that's kind of how the algorithm is gonna work. I'm not gonna draw out the entire decision tree because I think you probably get the point. These three sets are gonna give us all the information we need. Okay, so like I mentioned, the, the three sets are gonna be all the information we need. We have a column set, we have a positive diagonal set, and remember the positive diagonal is determined, let's just place a comment, is determined by R plus C, and the negative diagonal is determined by R minus C, so let's just make sure we remember that when we're actually writing our code, R minus C for the negative diagonal. And we're gonna have a result, which is basically gonna tell us all possible end queen solutions, and we're also gonna maintain a board. So initially, I'm just gonna make the board a array of let's say and by the way i didn't mention this but a dot is basically indicating an empty location so this multiplied by n is going to determine a row how many rows are we going to have well for i in range n right it's an n by n board so i'm just initialing a board with periods or dots in every single position. So then we can define our backtracking recursive function. And remember, we're going to be doing it row by row. So initially, we're going to start at row zero, then we're going to go to row one, row two, all the way until we get to row n. Row n is our base case. That means we're out of bounds. That means we already completed every single row. So if we ever reach this position where row is equal to n, that means we were able to find a valid n queen solution. So what can we do? Well, of course, we're going to return. But before we return, we're going to add whatever the current board is and we're going to add it to the result but we are going to make a copy of this board because we're still going to use it in uh, subsequent function calls for this recursive function so we're going to make a copy of this board and we're also going to change the formatting the way they want it each row is not going to be an array each row is going to be a string so we're basically for each row here we're just going to join each substring together so let's make a copy of this board which we can do by taking four, let's say, row in the board. Each row, we're going to take each row and then join it together. So we can do that in Python like this. Uh, empty string dot join this entire row together. And then 
doing this, we'll have a copy of the board where each row is basically joined together, right? And then we're gonna take that copy and append it to the result. So result.append copy. I mean, I'm sure there's different ways you can do this if you're using Java or C++. This is just an easy way to do it in Python. So if we did not reach the base case, that's when we're gonna continue. So we're gonna go through every single I in range of N, right? We're gonna try every single position in the current row that we're at, and we're gonna see which positions are we allowed to place a queen inside. And this I actually refers to the column, so I'm gonna change it to for C in range N. So basically, if C is in column, meaning it's already been used in this column, or R plus C is already in the positive diagonal, which means the positive diagonal has already been used, or if the negative diagonal R minus C has already been used, that's how we know we have to skip this position. So what I'm gonna say is continue if that's the case. That means we're not allowed to use this column row position. But if we are allowed to use this position, let's do exactly that. Then we can do a backtracking call you know, do the same thing, backtracking call. Let's go to the next row. But before we do that, we know we have to actually update all of our sets, right? Because we, we weren't using this uh, combination, but now we are using it. So we have to say column.add this column, and we have to say positive diagonal.add row plus column, and we have to say negative diagonal add row minus column. So that's just kind of some of the pre work that we have to do. And we also have to update the board itself, right? We have to say, okay, at this position in the board row column, let's set it equal to a queen, not a dot anymore. So that's what we're gonna do before we start our recursive backtracking solution. And after we're done, we have to do the cleanup that is required in most, in most backtracking solutions, right? So we have to basically do what we just did here and undo all of it for the next iteration of the loop. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this because we're literally just gonna be having to rewrite every line. So instead of adding all of these to the set, I'm gonna be removing all of these to the set, right? That's kind of what backtracking means. We're, we're backtracking from what we just did, seeing if maybe multiple solutions exist, right? That's the brute force element of this. So we initially set this equal to a queen. Let's set it back equal to an empty space or a dot in this case. And that's really it. We have no return condition in this backtracking. So once this loop is done executing, then we're done with the entire function. So now outside of here, all we have to do is call our backtracking function, passing in row zero. And then once that is done, we will have updated our result. So our result should contain everything we need. So then we can just be able to go ahead and say, okay, return the result. So you can see that the solution does work and it is pretty dang efficient, even though it's a backtracking brute force approach. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.